At first glance, the oscilloscope looks like a very complicated instrument. Rest assured, there's a lot of logic and reason behind its design and once this logic is exposed, you really enjoy working with it. In this lecture, I'll talk about the basic controls that you'll find on any oscilloscope. I'll also show you a few examples of how these controls work on my oscilloscope. Don't worry too much about the specifics of which knob and button does what, but pay attention to what they do. The specifics of how differ between oscilloscopes made by different manufacturers, but the what they do does not. Oscilloscopes vary in sizes, capabilities, and organization of the user interface. Benchtop oscilloscopes look like the one in this photo, but there are other types of oscilloscopes like USB or PC oscilloscopes and portable oscilloscopes. PC oscilloscopes don't have a physical user interface apart from their input and USB connectors. They use a computer to implement an interface with a display and the various knobs and buttons that a benchtop instrument has. I'll show you how to use a PC oscilloscope in this course. Also, portable oscilloscopes are very small in size and very light. They do have a screen that can show waveforms and settings, but their physical buttons are limited to the absolutely necessary ones. But no matter what kind of oscilloscope you have, it will provide you with these six bare minimum user interface elements. One, a display to show the signal waveform measurements and other information. Two, connectors for the probes and more about the probes in a later lecture in this course. Three, controls that we use to set up the time scale of the screen and the horizontal position of the signal. Four, controls that we use to set up the voltage scale of the screen and the vertical position of the signal. Five, controls that we use to set up the kind of change in the signal that the oscilloscope should look out for in order for it to start displaying and or recording the signal. And finally six, there's a bunch of other buttons that have different functions depending on what the oscilloscope is doing. So these are multifunction buttons. Oscilloscope offer many other features depending on the brand and model, but all of them have these six UI elements. Let's continue with an overview of each one and remember that throughout the experiments in this course, you'll get plenty of practice using them. Let's start with a display. A display is where everything happens. At the very least, it shows the signal waveform. Virtually all modern oscilloscopes will also show the time in the horizontal scale, the voltage, the vertical scale, and trigger settings. They'll also show automatic or manual measurements. So here's an example of a measurement, but this is just a single measurement. You can go one step further, as I'm about to show you here, and show various statistics around this and other measurements. So this simply shows the rise time of this edge. Another thing that you can show on the screen are these lines here that are called cursors. You can use cursors to mark specific positions on a waveform. So these are things that you can do with the display. Let's move on to the inputs. All oscilloscopes offer at least two inputs where you can connect the probes that convey the signal from the test circuit. Once you connect the probe and attach its tip and ground lead to the test circuit, it can set up your oscilloscope to receive the signal. Each input has its own independent set of parameters that you can set. So in this video, I'm browsing some of, uh, through some of the options that are available for channel one. I can set the coupling, ground probe ratio, input impedance, polarity of the signal, and there's a few other parameters here, but don't worry about what each of these do for now. You learn more about each of them later in this course. Next are the horizontal controls. The horizontal controls allow you to play around in the time domain. This means that you can control two things that belong to the horizontal axis in the display. First, 
You can set how much time is represented by each horizontal division. You can see here I've marked up one of these divisions horizontally. You can turn the scale knob to increase or decrease the amount of time captured in each division. In the case of my oscilloscope, we've got 14 horizontal divisions. So once you set the time scale, you can set up the top left of the screen. Then you can multiply that number by 14 to work out how much time the screen contains. You can also control the horizontal position of the waveform by turning the position knob and that allows you to move the waveform left or right. Next up, the vertical controls. The vertical controls allow you to play around in the vertical voltage domain. Just like with the horizontal controls, in the vertical dimension you can control two things. First, you can set the voltage differential that is represented by each vertical division, and I've marked here one such vertical division. You can turn the scale knob to increase or decrease the voltage per division. My oscilloscope has a total of eight vertical positions, so once you've set the vertical scale, which in this case is 200 millivolts in this example, you can multiply it by eight to work out the voltage differential between the top and the bottom edge of the screen. And second, you can set the vertical position of the waveform. Just turn the position knob to move the waveform up or down. Next up, we have the trigger controls, which is a very important component and feature of all modern digital oscilloscopes. The trigger allows you to set the oscilloscope to be able to recognize the signal that you want to capture and measure. Without a set trigger, the oscilloscope will not know what to do. Uh, it will not know what is it that you wanted to capture. So triggering depends on a change in the signal that can be treated like a signature. And when the oscilloscope detects this change, it knows that this is the part of the signal that you wanted to capture. So it starts recording immediately. So that's the source that I've configured and then the type of uh, trigger that I want, upslope or downslope. So here's what happens once I actually finish the calibration and then create a signal that matches the kind of trigger that I wanted to capture. You can see that the oscilloscope detected that upslope and then displayed it on the screen and, and froze that display so that I can continue with measurements. Let's stop here with the discussion on oscilloscope controls. In the experiments that follow in this course, you will get a lot of practice on how to use each and every one of them and quickly develop an intuitive sense of what they do. Let's move over to the next lecture where I'll talk about probes.